Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, welcome to another presentation brought to you by connectvk.com.au. Well, exciting times. Um, my first shipment of uh, Sun SDR uh, products has um, arrived. And um, uh, to be more specific, it's, uh, it's only one model so far that we've imported, and uh, that is Sun SDR 2DX. Okay, so very quickly, um, what's in the box? Very well packaged DC power cable, uh, Ethernet cable, the radio itself, a couple of the adapters, two um, stereo 6.35 mil plugs, mini UHF to SO239 uh, cable, your Ethernet cable as well. So everything you need to get this unit uh, plugged in and um, and uh, start communicating. All right. So the purpose of this video is uh, just to demonstrate what it takes to get this thing connected to a PC if you had zero knowledge um, of uh, and zero experience with um, SDR radios uh, like myself. So let's get started. All right, so what you can see on the screen there, the, obviously the first thing would be that you gotta jump into the Sun SDR um, website and um, download the, uh, the software. Please be mindful that software is specific to a model. So if you got a SDR 2DX, that means you gotta download the software to match that model. Uh, one more notification before I get started. On the rear panel of the radio, you will see something that looks like a VGA port. A lot of people would uh, confuse this with the uh, video display port. So this is not a port where you're gonna plug in your monitor uh, for display purposes. This is a control port, which you will be most likely using to control your power amplifier. Okay, so on their website, you will uh, see under the file section, and I will leave the link to the website in the description below. There is a couple of files, and one of them is called uh, Getting Started for Dummies. Excuse the title, it was written by a gentleman from uh, Scotland by the name of Pete, who is also a ham radio operator, and um, I give a lot of credit to him because um, he has made my journey 10 times easier than if I was doing it without his notes. So the radio doesn't need any drivers as such. Connect your um, radio to a DC power supply. Hook up your LAN cable from the back of the radio to your PC and uh, download the software. That will be the step number one. And once again, the note on the software, please make sure that you're downloading the correct version of the software to match your radio model. Okay, so I have downloaded I have downloaded this uh, instruction manual, let's call it, and printed it off. So the first step would be to uh, add another LAN connection. Well, I'm saying PC because I'm using the the PC. Well, you could be doing this on Mac as well. Follow the bouncy ball. But again, this getting started for dummies was a godsend and uh, and a very easy to follow instructions. So um, thank you uh, to the author once again. All right, so setting up the uh, uh, LAN port, he has suggested uh, the IP address in the manual there, which was 192.168.16.50, and uh, that's what I've used to set up my uh, new LAN connection. The next step was to amend a few parameters within the TCP IP protocol, which would allow the two devices to communicate, as well as um, I've, I've noted that by adding the, uh, the default gateway, I was allowed to um, have the internet connection as well. Now, what you will find in his notes is that he describes that once you connect your radio to your PC, you will have the communication between them two. However, you won't have the internet connection, and then you will need to do the step two and step three um, in his um, instructions there. But I found out that by adding default gateway um, in this uh, TCP IP protocol there, which is the IP address of your uh, internet router, fixed up my internet connection problem. So uh, I've got the end result, which was the communication between the radio and the PC, as well as the internet connection. So it was uh, pretty cool. Yeah, I've um, I've used the, the good old DOS screen there to uh, ping some um, IP addresses in order to find my router's uh, IP. It took me about uh, two or three different tries. 
but then I, I realized that I can just Google that and and <laughs> and get it sorted. But yeah, once you get that, plug it in there um, underneath the uh, sub subnet mask, and uh, you'll be good to go. That is really it. You'll see that at the end, that little red cross next to the LAN connection wasn't there anymore, which means that the radio is communicating now with with PC, which was uh, the the intent, I guess. And uh, we got the connection. Now it's uh, worthwhile mentioning that. In order to uh, preserve the IP address uh, specifically and solely for this device, uh, you would need to assign a static IP address through your uh, um, internet router in order to allocate a permanent IP address to this device. I will be doing another video later on, which will be part of the um, SDR series uh, videos that will give you a detailed explanation on uh, how to uh, assign uh, static or permanent IP address but that's to come okay so now that I've got my uh, LAN connection sorted and the radio is talking to the PC it's uh, time to uh, fire up the software and uh, see if we can uh, uh, get some signals or if we can uh, confirm that we got this radio um, uh, connected and working okay so the software started and I got nothing and the reason I've got nothing is uh, <laughs> learn on my mistakes. Uh, there is a power button on the radio which was turned on, so that was okay. But there's also a power button within the software that needs to be um, selected or clicked in order to um, activate the uh, the radio, which uh, took me about half an hour to realize. Well, not to realize, but to um, uh, work out that that's uh, what it was. What was missing? I thought that by selecting the front panel power button, the radio is is on and engaged, ready to function. But I was wrong. Okay, so the radio is connected. I'm using my uh, 40 meter vertical antenna there, which is uh, generally a very uh, noisy antenna. So apart from the noise floor there, everything else is functioning perfectly fine. And this is not a complete setup video, this is just a connection to a PC which we have achieved clearly. And um, in order to um, um, get this device uh, set up properly, uh, I'm assuming they're gonna, I'm going to spend a few more hours in setting up uh, different parameters there. But it looks, uh, looks amazing, really nice, uh, really good uh, receive, very sensitive receiver there. Uh, lots of functions to, uh, to cover. I'm really looking forward to it. So uh, there you go. One way or the other, most definitely a steep learning curve ahead. Anyway, I'm not sure if I mentioned this, but uh, this radio is um, HF 6 meters and 2 meter rig. So um, on HF, it does uh, 100 watts, 6 meters, 50 watts, and uh, VHF, um, 8 watts. So um, yeah. It's a little compact unit, but it's a, it's a powerful machine. Alrighty, so uh, that you know, really concludes uh, my presentation or step number one in a series of videos uh, regarding the Sun SDR. I'll try my best uh, to uh, post uh, as often as I can and uh, keep you updated with the, with the progress. This unit is uh, available for uh, immediate dispatch. It's available on our website, connectvk.com.au. And considering the fact that we are the first Australian distributor, we have managed to uh, secure some special promotional pricing. Okay, so uh, thank you very much once again for your attention and uh, support. Until the next time, wishing you all the very best and uh, 73s. Oh, my God.